And a, a, another concrete way is to get those CDs, which are really terrific. Chris Hedges and Richard Wolf and Russell Means, a classic program that I just re-edited and was broadcast on Columbus Day. It's called For the World to Live, Columbus Must Die. And the other program is Paul Cienfuegos, 100 Fires, on We the People, about uh, restoring citizen rule rather than corporate rule, uh, in rolling back Citizens United and all of these other, uh, um, the uh, lack of wisdom from the uh, Supremes in their decision making that have made uh, corporations people. So getting those books right. and CDs helps alternative radio too. Where, where are we in keeping the internet free? Uh, it's always a struggle and it's certainly uh, the free press, uh, freepress.org has, has been in the forefront of uh, maintaining uh, the internet access and integrity. But one can say with certainty uh, that corporations and the ruling, the ruling class will want to control access, will want to privilege certain websites over other websites. And so it's only, going to, it's only going to be as a result of citizen activism that the internet remains uh, a voice for the people and is accessible uh, to all. Um, the Opera Lady in NPR. Can you comment on that? The woman who in, was involved with Occupy DC? Lisa uh, what's her name? Lisa Simeone. Lisa Simeone. Yes, Lisa Simeone is, um, was recently um, uh, taken off a program. I don't have the uh, full details on that, but from the little I was able to um, get from uh, internet reports was that she was a, uh, an active member supporting uh, Occupy DC uh, the, the station did not uh, take kindly to that and removed her from being host of an opera program. Did I get no, that right, no, Mary Charlotte? No. No, 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 more or less. The story is, the correction, the, to correction is, she had two shows. One was being the host of the opera show. The other was um, uh, uh, a show called um, Soundprint, I believe. Soundprint. And they pressured the producers of Soundprint to fire her. She was fired. The station that produces the opera show refused to fire her, and now NPR no longer will distribute that show. So they, a station stood up to NPR, and, and but the, the idea that, that NPR would be upset that someone who hosts an opera show can't participate in, in free speech is appalling. Well, also, apparently, NPR's <coughs> own bylaws say that if you're involved in a music program, you're exempt from their ethics rules about political activity. Whereas if you're involved in news shows, there are certain guidelines. But they didn't really conform to their own bylaws. Mm -hmm. Wow. And she was doing it on her own time. Not while she was working for NPR. Yeah. Wasn't she a graduate of St. John's here? She's a graduate of St. John's, is that right? Well, that's a very subversive institution. And about opera, I don't have to tell you. you know, it starts with Verdi and Aida. It goes right up to Philip Glass and Santiago Grana. I, I rest my case. So we, we've got all these great, great causes out there, and we're all fighting for different things. Uh, seems like we could all get behind one thing, you know, getting the corporation out of you know, that amendment that's kind of going around that we might change the corporations being people. Citizens United. Citizens United. Well, why can't we all get behind that? What's going on? It's very hard to pass a constitutional amendment. Uh, you, you remember the tremendous grassroots support for the Equal Rights Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, that was stopped in its tracks by, you know, just a huge amount of corporate and in the case of the ERA, uh, organized religion, you know, rolled that back and prevented that from ever, ever uh, being passed by two-thirds of the state legislatures. It's very difficult to pass a constitutional uh, amendment. Uh, we need a radical restructuring of, of the country, of the political system. Uh, and that, it's, that's what it's going to take. If we're going to wait for Citizens United to be reversed by a constitutional amendment, uh, you know, I think we're all going to be on the wrong side of, uh, you know, that particular struggle. It's, it has to come from elsewhere. We can't wait for that. 
The earth can't wait because the destruction is continuing inexorably. You know, I don't, I don't want to sound like the prophet of doom here, but why not? Uh, it's, it's, you know, people are talking about tipping points. I don't know, you know, Bill, Mc, Bill McKibben is going to be here, I think on November 9th, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Yes. Uh, you know, he, he and uh, David Suzuki and, and uh, uh, David Brower in his time, uh, Lester Brown, all of these, you know, thinkers, uh, Maud Barlow, they're all talking about tipping points, that it's going to get, you know, the environmental crisis is going to reach a certain degree where it will be irre irreversible. It's happening. It's, it's already well. It's happening. Uh, Mr. Bar, are you going to be visiting the Occupy Santa Fe while you're here? I'd love to. Why don't we do it tomorrow? Where is it exactly? Behind site. It's uh, a rail yard. In the park, the rail yard park. By the railway, uh, no. by the railway station? Correct. The Albuquerque train? Okay, I'll find out where it is. Yeah, it, yeah, it's only, it yeah I'm here uh, tomorrow and uh, Wednesday, so I'd be happy to visit it. Love to. Are you involved in that? No, just watching. Watching, observing. <laughs> okay. Lucy? What about the European Union? Where do you see that fitting into everything? You think it has a future? The European Union is in uh, huge um, economic trouble. And, you know, again, part of this world capitalist, neoliberal uh, economic system. And uh, the, the internal pressures uh, on the EU now economically, uh, I mean, Italy is on the verge of bankruptcy, as is Spain. Uh, Greece may default, which, if the example of Argentina is, any, is anything, might not be a bad idea and, and you know, not pay its debts. So it's, this is all part of that, you know, the same uh, network of banks, central banks, European banks, uh, you know, the very powerful German economy, which basically drives uh, the EU, and the US economy, which drives, you know, much of the rest of the world. What's interesting, uh, which I didn't have a chance to talk about, I'm sorry to digress here for a moment, is that uh, Panetta's remarks are, are worth looking at, he's the war secretary, because it's all about China. And when I'm in India, when I'm allowed in India, uh, the Indian government is also talking about China. China is seen as this huge uh, military as well as uh, economic threat. And for years I've been telling American audiences that by 2035, 2040, China is going to pass the United States as the number one economic power in the world. I've re revised that. It's one of the things you can do when you, you're a public speaker. You can you know, change your tune, uh, as it were. I think within the next uh, 10 or 12 years, uh, China will surpass the US as the you know, number one economy uh, in the world. And that's going to be a very dangerous moment because of jingoism here, because of nationalism here. Uh, because of the tremendous power of the military-industrial complex. So uh, there's, a, there's a saying in South Africa that a, a dying bull, a wounded beast, is, is the most dangerous animal of all. And so there's a possibility of even more uh, military aggression, more military intervention, because that's the only card uh, that the U.S. will have left to play as it gets increasingly... Uh, weaker uh, economically. I don't lament the loss of U.S. imperialism. I welcome it. I think that will be an enormously, uh, you know, I think it would be a great thing, a great thing for the people of this country and a great thing for the people of the world. Whether it's going to be replaced by another, you know, similar system, that's not something to look forward to. Uh, but, you know, in order to solve the environmental crisis, it has to be global. It has to be the common good. It cannot be one-off operations of Canada or Bolivia or Tanzania. It has to be global. It's the only way we're going to save the environment. I would like to request that tonight's talk be made available as a CD because of a comment my husband made a few days ago that is, nothing works anymore. 
And I've been answering that lament for the last 10 years, but I think you did it better than anybody said it in a long while. Well, we have our comrade here, Robin Collier, who is recording, so why don't we make it available? Yeah. We will. How, um, culturalenergy.org. Culturalenergy.org. It's in faraway Taos, New Mexico. You can, can even go there. You can even visit there. Uh, culturalenergy.org and, and uh, contact uh, Robin. His email is on that uh, website, and you can uh, probably download it within a few days. He's very fast. Will it be aired anywhere? Well, I don't know. It's far. Yeah. <laughs> And this is, uh, it'd be interesting to air. I mean, I can't air, I don't air myself on alternative radio. You know, I don't feature myself. Uh, but I'm on other shows, so I'm on Mary, Mary Charlotte's uh, Santa Fe Cafe show, you know, when I come here. I'm on KPFA, I'm on uh, KUOW in Seattle, but I don't feature my own voice on my own show. We have a whole page of, of David's presentations on our website, so you can listen to them online. Um, I did, I interviewed last year somebody from a human rights organization who had studied the Tea Party in great detail and basically had studied all, I think there were seven factions of the Tea Party and who led each one and what they were all about and how they were similar and how they were different. And he said, two of them are funded by the Koch brothers and the others are not. And the ones that are not funded by the Koch brothers are bigger and more active. And he said, you really are making a very big mistake if you think that this is not a grassroots organization, because it really is. And you have to understand who those people are and how they think. Otherwise, they will get away with all sorts of things, which they're already doing. But it, I learned from that conversation that it's just too easy to write it off as a Koch Brothers phenomenon. There's a lot more of a grassroots nature to it than we think. Any other questions? Thank you, David, so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you all for coming. Thank you, Thank you.